Hey guys, this is Daniel from Land Investing Online. In this video, we're gonna go over MapRite and some of the features, how we analyze land. This is a tool we use every single day. Our employees use it. Our members at Land Investing Online use it. It's a very powerful tool when analyzing land. So this is about analyzing land, going over some attributes and things that we're gonna look at. First video that, or the first thing that we're gonna do is go to the state. So you'll see when you go to MapRite.com, you can go to landinvestingonline.com slash MapRite to get a discount for it but you're gonna click Vermont or wherever you are. So in this example, we're gonna use Vermont. So you click the state you're in and then click get started. And then you can search by a few different things here. You can search by address, by latitude, longitude, by parcel, owner name, owner address, owner parcel ID. And that's generally how we search is by parcel ID, the APN, APN number. So in this, I'm gonna use the parcel number and you gotta, type in the county that you're in. In this example, we're in Rutland County, and then just put the parcel number in there. Um, if that doesn't work, sometimes the parcel numbers won't pull up. You can search by the owner name, which is another really, really good strategy. So click go, and the parcel is going to pull up. So this is outlined of the, let's see, 13.1 acres. And let's see here. 13.1 acres and it's scrolling down. You can see different things. So you can see the owner's address here, the acreage. I like to look at the owner's address to see if they are in or out of state. In this example, they live in North Carolina. So you know, they're nowhere in the area. Sometimes you'll get people across the street that own more land trying to sell or whatever the situation is, but go through here. See, sometimes it shows what they bought it for, what the mortgage is different things like that. In this situation, it doesn't, but make sure to always read through the parcel information when going through MapRite. Great, tax amount, all that stuff, tax code. So now we can click convert to map features and it should outline it. One of the first things I always do when analyzing land is I'll just scroll over this red line to make sure it matches up. So this showed the 13.1 acres, right? That's what the county is reporting it as. And then the red line is MapRite's estimate of what is around what this red line makes up. So they'd say this red line makes up 12.74 acres. According to our maps, this is not 100% accurate. Take it with a grain of salt, but it has been pretty, has been accurate when using it for my personal business. So always look at that. If this were to come back and say seven acres or something and it's 13, that's a major issue. But since it's 12.74, if it said 12, 13, 14, something around there, that's completely fine. It's no big deal being a little bit off typically. Great, so now you can go to the base maps and you can click around to see different views. Sometimes like Google will have something from 2017, the infrared will have something from another time and then you have the hex. So sometimes you'll see different structures around neighbors. It's good to click different views to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But the first thing I generally look at when looking at land isn't any of this. It's okay, so we already did the red line. Now let's look at the shape. This shape is, Different because it kind of points out, but I'm not very concerned with that. There's plenty of road frontage down here. That's the other thing. Is it on a road? That's uh, how, like, what's the access like? That's very important. Analyzing the access. Is it on a road? What's the shape? I, I really always look at the shape first because you get some really goofy looking shapes. Um, I'll try to find one here in a bit for you guys to show what not to look for. But so how's the access? How's the, sh uh, the slope? We're going to get into that in a minute. Does it have road access, like we just said, and the shape? So let's look at the road access here. It's clearly there's built houses on both sides, which I like to see, um, built on the, across the, directly across the street and then two over as well. My assumption is that this is going to be sloped. We're up in Vermont. It's in a mountainous area. It's going to be sloped, I believe. So you can turn parcels on and off here. I'm going to turn the labels off. So you can turn them on and off to see the different shapes of the, all the properties around them. If you want to turn it off, you can. If it's distraction, you can. Um, so those are some different things you can do with it. But from here, let's look at the slope. Um, so if you click overlays, here's all the different things you can look at with MapRate. One of the first things we always look at is the contour lines. So that's the actual slope. Contour lines, every single line you see is in this example, you can see it goes from 1480 right here to 1500. So this is 1480 feet elevation. Now it's 1500 and it's 20 feet in between each line. So this is a very sloped property, very, very sloped. Right off the street, you can see, 
let's see, it's 1440, 1460, 1480. This is very sloped. What you can do to kind of look at this and get an idea of how actually sloped it is and how the land lays is you can go down and you can click 3D right here in the bottom right corner. Once you click 3D, I hope we pick this up decently. Give me one second for it to load. There we go. So I hope you guys can see this and then you can hit control if you're on a MacBook and kind of scroll around like this. But you can see this is on the side of a mountain. This is Vermont though, guys, keep in mind. If this was something like this in Indiana or somewhere flat, I'd be much, much more concerned. This is in Vermont. You can see there are houses built on this significant slope. Yours might be a little bit more slope than the neighbor right over here, but that's kind of what we look at to get started. So that's a concern for me. I'm, I need to look into this more with them, being, with them being sandwiched in between two properties on similar slopes. That makes me feel a little bit better about this. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on. We're going to have to do some more due diligence on that in the future. I'm going to get out a 3D so we can go back. But yes, as you can see down here, so this is what sloped parcels look like up here on this side of the road. When you come down here and you zoom in, this is not nearly as much sloped. Anytime you see a circle means that's a flat spot. That's like the peak of a mountain type of thing. So this is a flat area at 1260. Anytime you see the lines, the further apart the lines are, the less slope it is. The closer together, the more sloped it is generally. But you have to always look because map rate's not accurate. Sometimes you'll get, these are 20 foot intervals in between each slope contour lines. Sometimes you'll get 40 feet, 60 feet. I've even seen 80 feet. So this is 20 feet lines and 10 feet is probably the most common, um, depending on where you are, of course. But here is 20 foot lines in this situation. So the further apart the lines are, the less slope it is. So you can see down here, you have nice flat areas. I'm trying to find a flat area so I can show you what it looks like. Here's something more normal for flat. This is a golf course. So that makes a lot of sense. You see all the circles on this and you see how far apart these lines are. You can come here and click perimeter measure tool and you can measure out the distance. So from here to here is 724 feet and it's going 20 feet. So it's a little over 20%. Um, yeah, so 20 feet for every 200, no. So it's, yeah, let's see what that is exactly. Let's do 20 divided by 735. Yeah, that's not sloped at all. So that's in my calculation, if it's right, is 2.7% slope. So that's that's flat and that's why it's a golf course right there. So you have a little bit of rolling hills and whatnot. But yeah, you can measure all of this out. Um, let me undo that. I want to come back to our property we're looking at here. And you can measure it right off the road. So these first, let's just go 200 feet. So the first 195 feet, 187 right here, it goes up 20, 40, 60 feet. So if you do 60 divided by 187, that's a 32% slope, guys. That is going to be very, very difficult to build on. Obviously, it can be done. It's pretty. It's on a mountain. People probably spend money to do that in these types of areas, but it is something we need to do more. 32% is a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of slope. So if this was in many, many areas of the US, I would throw this out right away. Since this is in Vermont, we're sandwiched in between properties that are built on similar slopes. We can look at this a little bit further. Let's go into some other features that we use. County lines here, we're gonna turn that in. This is more for analyzing the price. You can see exactly where it is in the county. These gray lines here are the county lines of Rutland County. So we're at the north area. So we're north sandwiched right in between this peak. You can always got to make sure one of the first things I do is check if it's in a floodplain. It's not because if it was, you would see something like this blue. Um, so it's not in a floodplain. I'm going to also turn on water features. You can see creeks and stuff with this. There's no creeks running through it or, or any ponds on it. Click wetlands as well. Wetland shows what's wet around it. It would look like this. There's no wetlands on it. So it's checking off all those boxes as I would assume it would because how sloped it is. Water doesn't sit on things this sloped. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, those are some of the main things that I look at. You can click soil and check the different soils out. I don't use that too much. I use it to see the consistency. Like if this parcel was a lot different looking on the soil test, like if this was purple or something and everything around it was orange, that would be something to check out. But yeah. 
You can also see things like land use. Not all of this stuff's 100% accurate. So I always do due diligence on all the properties we get back. We can't, you gotta confirm everything you see on here. This is just an initial check guys. But what you can do now is actually, so this checked off everything. It's not wet, it's not in a flood zone. The slope's very significant. That's the one thing we wanna look at more. We said 32%, but we want to confirm that as well. We get drone photos on all of our properties we buy to kind of look at it in further details. But what you can do now, guys, you can save as and put a name in here. I'm just going to put Rutland 13 acres. And I'm going to save. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up the KML so we can see this on Google Earth. So you can download, there's a KML spot to download it on the main page of MapRite. So you just have to go to the map and put uh, look, search what you saved it as. So Rutland 13, I just hit control F, pull up the KML. I hope you guys can see this. So on Google Earth, you can kind of get a sense. That's how you pull it up. You just have to save the KML. You can measure things out. Use um, for Google Earth. This is not a Google Earth tutorial, so I just wanted to show you how to export that. But if you do want to export it, just save the map and then click KML and do your different Google Earth. I think we have a Google Earth video on analyzing maps or an, on analyzing land as well. Um, but these that's the main way. We use uh, MapRite, guys. Like we just went through everything. I got a good idea of how this land lays, what my concerns are with the land, what I like about it. You can see where it is exactly. You can pull up, change the map views, see the water features. It's a really, really powerful tool. Another thing, I'm gonna pull this Thomas Shellbell up right down here. So Thomas F. Shellbell. I just want to show you guys how to search by owner name. So Rutland County. You can type in Shellbell. Oh, Shebo. Sorry, guys. Thomas Shebo. And you can search and it will come up with all the different properties that they own. In this case, in this county, it's only one property. But then you can click it and then set map boundaries. So you can search by owner name. Like I said, that's how you do it. Very easy to do. Um, hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any comments, put them in here. If you guys have any other ways you really use MapRite, throw them in the comments as well. We'd love to see it. Other than that, thanks for joining and we'll see you guys in the next video.